of crazy today. Ugh. So I'm finishing up taking down all of my sunflower stalks. And as a good little uh, self-sufficient person, I decided to see if there were any uses for sunflower stalks. You know, I save them from year to year and cut the bottom and trim up the top and then I use them for poles in the garden from year to year. But I found that some people actually cut them open, oops, sorry, and on the inside is uh, a substance that people make into flour. And so I wondered what that was all about. So I did a bunch more research. Let's go look at a stock I cut down and let's talk about that. Alright, so truthfully what I did is I just knock this one over. We'll use this as our demo um, and we'll check this out together but first gotta get it out of the rain so let's uh, drag it somewhere we can actually cut into it. Alright so as you can see here we've got two stalks. This one on the right is older and it's uh, been in the yard for, I don't know, three or four weeks, so it's a lot drier, it's a lot lighter. The one on the left with all the heads and stuff on it is the one I just cut down. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just kind of trim off these extra parts so we have something easier to work with. All right, so we've got these guys trimmed up. And let me show you what we're looking at. It's this white pith in here. That's what we want to get out. It's very styrofoamy like, um, but you can see it's surrounded, right, by the uh, outer protective shell, I suppose, which is really the stock. The stock can be um, made into cordage, by the way, if you're into that kind of thing. So this is the new one. Let's look at the older one. And it also still has this white pith. It's a little mushier, but um, of course this is older. So I'm going to try to figure out how to trim one of these on the bias. I think I'm going to try a serrated knife instead of something like a hacksaw because although these are, you know, as big as a limb, they're not uh, hugely hard and they're not... Um, I don't think they're going to be too resistant to a blade, so I'm going to give it a shot. Okay, so I sawed both of these in half. This is the newer one, and it's just a little orange here because I ended up uh, having to bust out one of my, this is actually a backpacking saw, and it's got some rust on the blade. Um, but I took a piece over here and I've cut into it on the bias, um, both sides, so we can take a chunk out and take a look at it. So this wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. The outer skin is pretty tough. But now we can see the inside here. And we can see, can you hear that? It even sounds like styrofoam. Looks like styrofoam, sounds like styrofoam. It's kind of puffy, like styrofoam. I'm sure it floats. So what can you do with this, right? Like I said before, um, people do several different things with it, but the most popular thing they do is make flour, like baking flour. So people will take the stock, cut it lengthwise, scoop out the middle and um, dry the middle and then uh, pulverize all this stuff and make it into a flour. Now what's the problem with that? So I consulted with my friend Anthony over at Palmetto Prepared just to see what his thoughts were on it and he said, you know what Martha, uh, that's all cellulose. Um, sure, you can eat it, but we're not ruminants, and so you're not going to be able to digest it. And I thought, well, that's <laughs> no shit, right? 
<laughs> I hadn't even thought about that, but duh. So I contacted um, the people at my local extension service and asked them if there was any use for it, if they could figure out anything, and would it hurt you if you ate it. And their answer to me was, we don't know. Uh, we checked with their whole staff. They even brought it to a meeting to ask, and they don't know. So um, some people on YouTube have taken this, used it as a flour, and eaten the product. So cellulose, again, is uh, not water-soluble, and um, it will just go right through your system. So it ca can cause gas and bloating and a bunch of other stuff. Will it hurt you? Um, other than the side effects of gas and bloating, probably not. Um, people definitely use it in food processing. Now major companies do. Um, have you ever uh, bought um, pre-shredded cheese and you know how that has carbs in it but regular cheese doesn't? It's often because there's a cellulose in there and uh, it's a pulp. It's a fiber pulp. This is cellulose and it keeps things from clumping. Um, they also use it in like uh, fiber capsules. So I would say I wouldn't use this as a flour exclusively, but if you were in a dire situation, like think back to the Great Famine, and people were extending their breads with, with wood um, or ash or whatever else they could get their hands on that was white, you could use this. It would be heavy fiber, and some people may end up with quite um, a problem with their stomach, but one could use this as, as a food extension. However, um, again, it's not edible, so there's no nutritional value in this. There's cellulose in lots of things, a little bit. There's a lot in uh, fruits and vegetables in the skin, but this is 100% cellulose, so flour or sunflower stock flour f-l-o-u-r no I mean you can make it but it's not good enough to eat so there's your lesson for the day and uh, yeah some of those folks on YouTube need to uh, do a little bit more research before they start eating stuff alright let me know if you have any questions thanks for watching